Uh, hi, everyone. So welcome to our next module. So now that we're comfortable with multiplying um, matrices and vectors, we can try and uh, start talking about more operators. So again, I want to uh, thank our, our sponsorship, our UC uh, UCLA Computational Medicine, for uh, funding these videos and the space online to store these. So in our last module, we talked about adding, subtracting, and multiplying matrices. So now I kind of want to motivate this idea of, of quote unquote dividing by a matrix. What, what does this mean? And so, um, okay, to, to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to think about matrices again um, as a function. So similarly to one of the examples in the previous module, what we did was we, we uh, obtained some new feature as a function of, of our, our starting point, our starting vector. So again, if I look at Mike and I, I have his height and his weight, I want to know, can, can I go to uh, his shoe in BMI? Can I, can I estimate his shoe in BMI? And so for the sake of this example, we're going to assume that there is some, some function out there that's going to tell me, based on your height and weight, what your shoe size and BMI are. And so in this example, what we've done is, is we've found this function, and we can apply this function, this matrix. And from last video, we know how to do our matrix uh, multiplication. And we'll take 1 tenth times 73 plus 1 50th times 165, and we're going to get the shoe size of roughly 10 and a half. We can do the same thing for the bottom uh, row and this uh, vector, and we'll get a BMI of around 20. So from here, we see that we, we do have some, some way to interpret a matrix as what is essentially a function. So maybe you're not comfortable with thinking uh, about it in this sense, and you're more comfortable with the way you've seen this before. And we can kind of think about this as an f of x equals y type of thing. We had x, Mike, and we applied some function to Mike, and we got y, the, the shoe in BMI size or shoe size in BMI. Uh, how, we're actually going to refer, how we're actually going to show this in uh, linear algebra um, or matrix notation is going to be uh, as AX equals Y. So instead of writing this as F of X equals Y, we can just say we're going to take some linear function A and we're going to apply it to X or Mike and we're going to get Y, the, the BMI and shoe size. And so this is commonly going to be how you're going to see this notation. A times X gives you Y. Now, Something you might also be interested in is, well, if I have that information, that function exists, and I can, I can get your, your shoe size and your BMI from your, your height and weight, can I go in the other direction? Can, based on your, your shoe size and your BMI, could I say your height and weight? And probably, may, uh, for this example, we're going to assume that you can do that. So uh, how do I do that? Well, I need some sort of uh, kind of an idea of an inverse. So given my output from before, can I, can I find what my input was? What, how did I get to uh, this, this shoe size and BMI? And so that's the idea of a function inverse, is I want to do this reverse mapping from my shoe size and BMI. And I want to get my original weight and height. And so uh, if we want, again look at this in kind of a matrix and vector notation, I'm going to say x equals um, my, my inverse function, a, so inverse a, uh, times y. And so inverse, this is, uh, I guess, our fancy way of dividing, because you can kind of think about this as a reciprocal. But since for our purposes, uh, we're going to think about it as a function, and it's just an inverse. So this is going to be kind of our I idea of, of a dividing by a matrix. So here. Uh, we see that, that such a function does exist, and we can kind of undo this, and we have an inverse of A, and when we apply this to shoe size and, and BMI, we can go back to our height and weight that we started from. So, there's some caveats to this. Can we always find a matrix inverse? And the answer is no. This is going to be uh, require some special conditions. And uh, what, what's going to be the main thing is that your matrix is full rank. And uh, more formally, you need, some, you need linear independence between the columns, and uh, you need a square matrix. So linear independence, what does this mean? It means that all of your columns are going to be providing you some, some uh, useful information, or some non-redundant information. So here, uh, if we think about the 1 and 0 square matrix uh, over here, I can think about this again as north and south and east and west. Now, if you were lost at sea and somebody wanted to find you, and you would report to them, well, where are you? Give me a latitude and a longitude about where you are. Can you give me your direction in east and west and uh, north and south? And can you give me some number, some, some units of those? And so hopefully you can do that, and you can uniquely identify where you're located. 
Now, say at your disposal, instead of just being able to describe your location in terms of north and south, as well as east and west, now, now I'm going to give you an additional direction. This additional direction is going to be diagonal. So not only do I have my north and south and east and west, but now I'm going to give you a diagonal direction of, say, uh, northeast and southwest. So now you can describe your position along the globe or lost at sea using north and south, east and west, and northeast and southwest. So you can kind of think about this, and hopefully it's clear that, well, why would I ever want to do this? This is kind of confusing. Why wouldn't I want to just describe my location in terms of north and south and east and west? Why do I need this, this extra axis, this extra uh, combination of this diagonal axis? And well, this is the idea of linear independence. I don't actually need to tell you about my north and south, my, my, my diagonal coordinates. I can more easily just tell you where I am by using north and south and east and west. I don't need this additional axis. So this, this column that's kind of a mixture of, of our directions, this diagonal direction, is not independent, is not linearly independent from our previous two directions. And it's not really going to give us any unique information. And so uh, what this is going to motivate is that, well, that's not full rank. We have three columns, but they don't tell us three unique pieces of information. They're not they, are, uh, they are redundant, whereas our, our green, our, our square matrix, is going to actually give us some unique information in each column. 